way to uh, the training AO. Uh, we're going to do a continuation of what we were doing last time, which is some of the, uh, the Minuteman uh, type of training rig. Again, the whole goal is building the shoot, move, communicate skills, and some of those aspects are going to be kind of baby steps, building this foundational layers before we can get into more complex situations. Asking anyone who's done this professionally for a long time at a high level will tell you it's all about mastering the basics. So we're going to start with learning the basics. So what would be the practical application of this sort of skill set, right? It's a militia man. I talked about that this is, uh, that we're basically a light infantry with zero support other than whatever resources we already have. What are the basic tactics needed for a small group to use during periods of violent civil unrest, natural disaster, lawlessness, to survive, protect, and recover assets? This may apply to the protection of homes, property, neighborhoods, or counter-hostile groups that seize control of an area. So what does this mean, right? In the past few years, we've seen, especially in cities, uh, these bouts of lawlessness uh, and uh, recently nearby they went out with the power about five days right extend that to a month uh, in bad weather and things start getting uh, desperate people are going to go out and start taking from each other by force is needed and so how do you protect your assets how do you how do you guard your property your perimeter so those are like the overarching ideas but how do we actually execute on that and it's at an individual level is a knowing the skills how how to shoot how to properly move and then when you're working with other folks how to communicate so my goal with thunder chief is to again implement training that starts to introduce these skill sets for the purpose of these videos uh, it's more of a demonstration and things for you to think about, right? Hopefully there's an enter entertainment value to it. Uh, but I do want to be able to talk about these things. Uh, I think there's a lot of folks out there that have uh, similar ideas and questions. Or and they're in different parts of their journey. So this might not be appropriate for someone who's obviously at a higher level. You know, if you were, you know, this or that in the military, you, you know, I'm not going to be teaching Green Berets anything new. But... For a civilian who has zero skill, uh, this might be valuable, right? Um, so, today we're going to go over our gear and some of the gear that uh, we did la we had last time and made some changes. For me, the holidays have been very hectic, but I did make some time to make some changes to my equipment. Uh, one thing is my pack. I did actually fill that out a little bit better uh, with the things that I would normally carry on. You would say like maybe an eight to ten hour patrol. Most of the time you're not going to be on foot, right? You're going to be in a vehicle if possible. Uh, however, we are going to go some over the basic skill sets of, you know, once you're out of a vehicle and you have to move around some because you might not drive up to the location you need to be at. You might park a mile away. Like how do you patrol in, right? And that's called that's called uh, movement to contact, right? And then once you get there, if you get in this altercation, uh, that's fire, it's fire maneuver, right? Um, one thing we'll do today is after we go through the qualifications, either one or both of them, uh, I'm going to uh, demonstrate what we call a scrambler. And what this is, is it's, uh, it's using varied targets at varied distances from varied shooting positions. So the beauty about this one is you can kind of mix it up. If you have 500 yards to work with, you know, you shoot at every 50 yards or every 100 yards uh, from different positions, different barricades, different obstacles. Uh, so it allows you to mix and match the skill sets because in theory we can think about, oh yeah, it's easy to drop to a knee, but in practicality you drop to a knee and you find out your extendo magazine is jabbing you in the ribs, well boom, there's something you just found out that you wouldn't find out without training. You know, something, you know, a modification you can make to your kit. And so... Uh, this is uh, stuff, especially for Thunder Chief to figure out his gear, and then this is uh, also uh, this is also part of physical exercise, right? Um, you know, I'm not a gym rat. I don't really PT like I should. I'm, I'm inherently kind of lazy and I'm busy. So, uh, 
I do like to do things like this to force myself to to uh, do physical fitness, um, and it's also a challenge, right? I come into these things generally. I don't I don't eat very much. I might have a couple of of coffees that are high calorie. Um, I just, sometimes a lot of times I'm low on sleep. Today I got good sleep, um, but I try to fatigue pre fatigue myself and set myself up to have a little bit more difficulty than just actually just going through the motion. So not only will we have to deal with, it's it's been actually the warmest day this week. It's actually been in the teens uh, in sub freezing uh, the past several days, but today is actually, let's see, look, it's, in, it's like 38. So like it's warm right now. So pause, part of that is that physical, uh, that physical, uh, stress of the environment if it's rain, if it's cold, if it's hot, etc. etc. Plus the fatigue of carrying stuff. Like I've loaded out my pack, uh, and I'll go over that here in the video. And that was, uh, I think I measured it at like uh, 16 pounds, 16, 17 pounds, right? I've got, I got food, I've got water, I've got extra ammo, uh, I've got like a fleece, like for a thermal top, just in case, right? But otherwise. It's again something that I would use for uh, use for a day, like eight hours, eight to ten hours max. And with that, with my rifle and my battle belt and my my chest rig, it doesn't have armor in it because I'm not going to be doing direct action stuff. Um, I'm looking to keep it around that 33% of my weight. So I'm at to what uh, I'm at 150 more or less. Uh, so half of that would be 75 so we're looking at you know 25 to 35 pounds maximum because you want to be light and mobile right we're not going in to buildings uh, to try to like you know uh, clean it out you know this is not something that you would do especially with two guys um, unless you are going into somewhere that you know that no one is armed um, or very lightly armed and you have the element of surprise and surprise and violence action you feel like you can get in there and do whatever you need to do before they can react but again part of that is gathering the intel finding out about your enemy and knowing when is the right time to attack will you be able to be successful and then you know determining if it's worth that if that's the right strategy and I don't think for two two to three guys to go in to a known hostile environment that's prepared, you're, you're gonna get killed because defenders always have the advantage. A single defender can effectively protect or defend three on one, right? So they, for every one defender, you gotta think you have to have at least three guys, right? And so you're, you're starting off with two, you know, unless you're dealing with like someone who's very inexperienced or unarmed, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have uh, much of an advantage. So that's where planning, strategy, and intel gathering is, is more important than the actual execution of trying to, uh, uh, the, the violence part is something you wanna minimize to just the essential time that you need to use it, if you ever need to use it. And ideally, if you're doing uh, violence, it's gonna be against bad guys, people that, that you know, or attacking you, attacking your homestead. They're a threat to your livelihood. They're not people that you can rationalize or, 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 or strategize or team up with, right? We're gonna get out and get our gear together and uh, we'll go over that and then we'll start training. Tell me about this shirt you got on. Oh, this one? Yeah. Uh, it's a Ford Observation Bomb. It was their uh, support shirt. Uh -huh. For Ukraine, they donated uh, all the proceeds to um, a couple of different uh, military groups over there. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty cool. I like the logo. The uh, they got that one, like the Trident thing. Yeah, that's their flag logo. So is that associated with your buddies that are out there? Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'll go over a kid here. A they bit. raised all that money um, for night vision gear and a bunch of other shit. Yeah, because they're not they're not funded by the actual military. Some of the units are, a lot of them are not. Yeah. A lot of them are civilians. Yeah, so they just contract, they're trained and contracted or whatever? Uh, they send them off to get training. Uh -huh. But uh, besides that, 
I mean, it's 100%. Like, most of that shit is uh, civilians. Yeah. Never in the military until now. Yeah. I'd say probably 90% of the, the ones that I know are not military at all. There's a, a lot of them that, that are in the military, but the ones that I know, the guys I'm friends with, none of them are... So, so would you say they're, they're almost kind of like, like militiamen from yeah. 2014 though? Yeah, so they're this like is the first invasion, the one that nobody talks about. Yeah, so they're they're basically like evolved militiamen. Yeah, 100. percent It's pretty it's pretty interesting the way their their stuff works over there. Like, it's not what ours would be. Mm. Where the the military wouldn't trust us and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. They're probably pretty desperate though. So. Yeah, but most of them, you know, a lot of those guys that I know over there too, they've been fighting since the first invasion in 2014 so they have experience and they most of them have some type of shooting background yeah so competition <laughs> competition shooters and then uh recreational shooters yeah so. but yeah right on. are you going for administrative results five here no whenever i talk talking balaclava <laughs> baklava <laughs> I, I, breathe, I, I i was out in the cold the other day so i brought uh breathing a lot of cold air uh-huh and so my that was hurting. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, today I've got to cover my mouth because I don't want to be fucking sick tomorrow. Yeah, I've got a lingering little bit, but today's been the best day finally after like almost four weeks. So. Yeah, they, uh, the, the, I, I will say this though, the weird thing over there with those guys is, uh, they're not doing conventional fighting like what we would think, like, oh, this is the military's going to send you out to the infantry. Yeah. Like, a lot of those guys are education, they're like, they're educated, very educated. So, they're, like, their jobs are anywhere from artillery to mortar teams, drone teams. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta. That's the big difference, especially too, like over here with us. Like we wouldn't think that. Yeah. You know, we're thinking all oh, infantry, infantry, infantry. They're they're using a lot of technology. I feel like we're very behind when it comes to that stuff. As uh, as like you know, just a our group. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, the, the whole thing that militiamen are, uh, I always, it's like, we're like light, really light infantry. We're not, yeah. but we're not infantry. You know, we're not, a, we don't have any backing. It's based on all the resources that you have available to you, like whatever you've organized or whatever you've self-provided. And so having this concept of like, you're going to run things like if you were in an army, big army or big Marine Corps thing it is like. There's a there's a big there's a big separation between between the two. Yeah, I think that's the thing too. It's like uh, with us and what's going on over here with everything. Like <clears throat> more people should be using that word over there instead of just being against it constantly to learn from it. Because there's a lot we can learn from it. Yep. A lot we can yep. learn from it. Yeah, I mean the likelihood of us being um, invaded is, is low. But then we talked about you know we had five days of power cut out in a county over right like five days turns to a month how, how how long till people start you know there was already crime within like the first day yeah correct and, and so the thing is, and, and that shit directly affects me because of where i live yep you know so it's like something i wouldn't think or thought would have happened or been prepared for necessarily i didn't think about the grid going down yeah like i might prep a little bit but i'm not a fucking hack yeah yeah you know? yeah <laughs> yeah yeah like that's definitely not something i was thinking grid down situation but luckily for me it was the brief and it came yeah back it was more of an irritation yeah we lost it for a day for something separate because duke was doing like power grid shutdowns or whatever and that was well, more of a noise but out in uh what was it seattle somewhere out that way another three substations got attacked mm, mm -hmm. uh this weekend no i didn't hear about that yeah yeah i've seen it on uh online but I think we're gonna see a lot more of that. Yeah, so. yeah, it's an easy target. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run the uh, the targets down, and we'll go ahead and get set up, okay. and we'll uh, we'll chat some more. All right, real quick to go, which is through the bag, right? I just got my straps tied down. Uh, outside here, for quick access. Uh, basically, got two magazines, a battery pack for my camera. But here, battery change, right? Here, uh, Snickers bar, food, and then water down in the bottom. And then back here, uh, I got an extra layer of thermals, an extra radio. It's not working, but it's just there for for there and some wet wipes, right? Because you never know you're going to take a shit. Wet wipes are super handy. 
Um, and then I'll lock all these straps down to make sure that they're all tied together so I don't have anything dangling like I did last time. So again, last time, you know, we had some, some changes for our kit that we wanted to do. This one's basically the same. Uh, I just filled out my pack more uh, with the stuff that I would carry. So it's a little bit heavier. It's at about uh, like 16, 17 pounds. Otherwise, I'm pretty lightweight. I don't have any armor on. That's, that's a big, heavy one. So I feel pretty good. Uh, I'm going to run this today. Uh, otherwise, same thing. I uh, will have to get a headset with the plug-in because the earpiece thing fitting under my muffs is just not is just not comfortable. Uh, otherwise, same thing. Uh, tourniquets, pen, or flashlight, magazines, uh, pistol magazines, radio pouch. This has got my, uh, my little monocular for spying so I've got this and this that I can use to use for observation uh, pack already went over so what changes did you do today uh, no armor today I'm gonna run with the uh, chest root um, one thing I really did last time uh, I did rearrange my belt um, which it feels better so I took and uh, moved my dump pouch to the left side and then uh, dropped one of the mag pouches Move the Josta over just to make it a little bit more torrential, more compact. So, so that's the Josta. This is like a multi. It holds a magazine. It's got like a like a little Velcro caddy, right? Let's bring it over here. Let's this right here. Let's get some pin. A little Velcro caddy, right? And then it's just like a general purpose bag that he, 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 can, he can flip open and use for whatever. So usually I carry water in there, but yeah. um, a lot of guys run it who uh, are running knots. So mm -hmm. it'll hold a PVS 14. Okay, so that's where a lot of people put a PBS 14 in. So. All right, so basically radio, and then we're not doing too much comms today. Just, it's just yeah, know, like, Ra here. radio, um, two mags on the carrier, one extra pistol mag. I've got a range finder in here, some more medical odds and then shit, flashlight. Okay. So, riding utensils. Right on. Yeah, I don't have, uh, between this and the hat, uh, my something like around your neck will help keep warm. This is something you can use yeah. even in the summertime. Uh, to get keep bugs stuff off your neck, sun off your neck, and then you can unwrap it and cover yourself. Worst case, if you need a little bit of you shade or that. something. So, um, yeah, the big reason I'm wearing this today is uh, the air is really cold. Yeah, We've had yeah. a cold front here for what like three days now. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm already feeling a little bit, so I want to make sure I'm not breathing in too much cold air throughout okay. the day. But. All right, cool. So we're gonna go in there, uh, put up targets real quick. We'll run through at least one of the qualifications. And then we'll get uh, get into some of the scrambler stuff, which will which will be interesting. So uh, let's go and do that. So what do you think about today's training? Again, we didn't really get to do much of the patrol element, right? Because it's just we're we're limited on time as family guys. But uh, how do you feel about just the basics on just going from shooting position to shooting position? You really improve once you, I guess, uh, watch what I was showing and uh, let me explain it, and then go through it a couple times. Yeah, um, felt good. Uh, only only thing was slowing it down. I was overthinking it um, versus after a little bit of communication, being able to pick it up and kind of go at a at a steady pace, nothing too fast. But I felt good on the last two runs of it. So yeah, all you do, I do is get the camera up close and add a bunch of camera shake <laughs> and like like you know transformer music, and it'll sound. It look like a lot of right. YouTube channels that are out there, but yeah, I mean, we're not trying to smoke ourselves in this one. This is more, you know, because you don't learn yeah. uh, when you train like that. If you try to just go out the gate and go hard and, and fast. That's what she said. <laughs> and smoke yourself. You're not learning things. You're just finding failure points. So before we find failure points, we have to learn what the, the what the the information is and build this fundamental. So. We were going to do uh, buddy on buddy, but that's something we ran out of time to do. So we'll talk about that on the next time. But we can continue because we have this basics. We can uh, go right to this next time, and then uh, hopefully next time, and then we'll uh, we can go to the buddy pair movement stuff. So do you want to talk about your what you thought about the shooting and stuff? Yeah, um, this performed really good. I kind of figured it would. I've only taken this out like five or six times now after getting the zeros, but um, yeah, it's, it's holding up well. Uh, it was a BCM complete lower, um, basically complete upper, but I put it together myself and it has a ballistic advantage, 13.9 barrel. 
um, with the dead air brake for when my can comes. So, yeah, so it gives you that mobility, the shorter bear of what's in the liquid. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is just a Palmetto State Upper with the um, FN barrel, right? I've got a Surefire, one of the cheaper Surefire lights. You saw me smashing up against a tree. Uh, it works really well. It's got the two modes, like a half on and then a double tap, and then it'll, it'll go on brighter. So you don't always need all the lumens for every situation. Um, I don't have any uh, backup iron sights because I always run a three power magnifier, right? Um, would I invest in a better optic? Probably, yeah, but this whole set has is, is worked really good. It's got the uh, shake awake technology, not a shut off. I don't think I've changed the battery yet, but I do carry batteries. I'm just kind of waiting to see how, how long it takes before it dies. Three by, this is really handy. Getting shots out to this, uh, out to 600 on 24 inch plates with the cheap Barnall uh, still cased ammo. The charging handle is, is stock. The lower is, uh, I think this is either, this is my era lower I built uh, with BCM furniture. I think this is BCM as well. And then this is stock that I traded you, that uh, B5 for. Right, so yeah. I like it pretty well. Uh, the contour, it's got a little bit of extra contour. First the mag pull, it's pretty lightweight, it's pretty sturdy, it doesn't move a lot, so I like it. And this rifle looks really good. Yeah, this this one I was, didn't do nothing too crazy. It does have the Aim Point Pro, um, and then I run the Troy backup because I'm not running the magnifier. But I thought about putting the magnifier on here, but this optic is so fucking big. Yeah, yeah, you really that don't space it's gonna it, yeah. the eye relief is gonna be way too far back. So yeah, I'm kind of just running with it like this for now, which is okay. I feel okay with it, but um, yeah, I mean. It's Pretty simple setup, surefire, nothing nothing fancy. Everything else is pretty much stock. Yeah, the only really reason to run this is in context is PID, right? Yeah. Legally, in a legal situation, I can't I can't shoot past house distance, right, or immediate uh, um, area around my home. But um, again, the concept of the, of the Minuteman, then you know, if you want to have that ability to look out further and identify um so i would say if you can't get a magnifier then get a separate monocle that's got yeah. some manifestation that way you can look this is really what i would be using this for is, is to really to look because i can comfortably get hits out to 200 300 without magnification but can i id something past 200 no but cool how about kit? Any kind of kit failures or changes? Um, antenna broke on the radio, but I kind of figured was going to have an issue with it because of where it was mounted at. Uh, never really mounted a radio on this carrier before. This is kind of one I just kind of keep in the car, um, especially when I'm traveling for work and stuff because I'm always having to go to shitty areas. So I kind of just keep this one in the car because it has medical and pretty much everything I kind of need. Um, but I don't never really run a radio on it. so. I didn't have any place to run it, so I ran it right here in the front, and with where the antenna was running up, sure enough, doing yeah, the up, up, yeah, it popped it right off. So, um, kind of my fault on that, but it's okay, no big deal. Just uh, figure out a different way to mount it. Now, considering the the temperature, right? So the way you yeah. layer your clothing is that if you start, you don't want to like if you soak your under layer, that yeah. that coldness doesn't permeate through your outer layers and then that what happens is the, the water is going through your different layers it's going to be pulling in the cold or actually drawing out the heat from your body making you colder right and the water transfers the heat right mm -hmm. so you find that out with your hat right it's cold so once you started sweating and then we stood still yeah like the cold on your your hat and stuff which is making you sweat started making you cold right so well it was making my head cold i think one of the things too is i i, I thought it was colder out than what it was yeah. and i thought the wind was going to be worse yeah um i probably didn't need to wear it but i didn't want to suck in all that cold air yeah because yeah. i'm kind of trying to stay from getting sick but uh yeah no by uh the last 30 minutes we've been out here for about three hours now right yeah uh, so the last 30 minutes of that my head got cold yeah, which, I, which is why I took it off. Yeah, yeah. going all the way down. So once you sit still, that you know that uh, heat transfers off of you. Yeah. Um. A lot of it too was uh, when we stopped that last time, when I had the, you know, my headset on with uh, the the beanie on top of it, and 
those that headset's very insulated. Yeah. So my ears were getting hot, which was causing my head to sweat. Yeah. Yeah. And so at that point, I was like, I gotta take this fucking thing off. Um, I didn't have to run it, but I, I, like I said, I wasn't trying to breathe all the cold air in. So it was like. Yeah, so maybe like something more shaman yeah. or something. Is or like just running the, the, the baklava without the without the actual the beanie on top. Um, aesthetics is nice, yeah. but um, after running around for two hours and breaking, starting to break a sweat, everything else is fine. I'm wearing mo mostly moisture wicking stuff underneath. Yeah. You know, same. I got moisture wicking underneath the pants and then the t-shirt, but um up here is everything's fine it's just my head got cold yeah i'm not i didn't get cold the entire time i'm actually more cold now it's, it's going toward the end of the day yeah. but my my fingertips are getting cold because these aren't insulating they're just for protection right uh toes are getting a little bit cold i'll what i could do better is get better socks i could only find one pair of some columbia socks and i think they're like a blend but having a nice pair of wool socks is going to yeah. be really good in case you get sweaty so they're going to they're gonna retain the I'm heat will, i'm wearing a wool blend right now um but these shoes have uh, a little bit of insulation inside. That's why I wore these today because yeah. I knew it was going to be colder. Yeah. They're not waterproof, but they are insulated. So my feet are fine. Um, my legs are fine. It was just the head. The head was the big one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just running. Uh, <laughs> I've got a Columbia like moisture wicking shirt underneath, yeah. and that's it. That's all I have. And but I knew once I put on my chest rig, that acts as a layer, and then the bag is on my back and right and that extra weight and everything and this is this is a big one to stay warm is if you keep your head covered you protect your neck protect your neck to protect your neck uh and then you wear your earmuffs that actually acts like a big yeah. uh it, that acts like a nice shield for your for not losing heat off your head or your neck um Worst case, I could always untie this and cover my face if I was going to be static or whatnot. But if I was going to be more static for longer, I would pull out my thermal uh, or put on a jacket over this uh, to stay warm. Yeah, and that's what I brought in my pack. So I brought a uh, another coat that I could throw over this um, instead of just having this on. If it did start getting cooler, um, nothing crazy, just a BDU coat. Yeah, just enough so that the wind can't cut through. It's like you want to stay warm enough, like if you're standing around, you're not freezing to death. But if you have to like move and shoot and get into some action or whatever, or you're on a long, like a patrol, like five mile patrol, that you're not sweating to death either. So right. it's finding like the blend of what layers, what clothes, what works. And then you find out like your gear has very little coverage, right? It's basically just a strap. So yep. that's not going to insulate you like my no. carrier is, right? So that would be like a different setup to consider like, well, you know, this is a breathable mesh. Do I need an under layer? You know, um, as far as pants, you know, like legs get cold, but not until like I'm standing still uh, quite a bit. But um, it's just things to consider. So I think uh, hopefully in the next uh, round of training, we'll be able to do uh, some of the bounding basics um, and then do actually get to the patrol stuff, right? So we're kind of working backwards here with the shooting. Uh, we're doing the movement. Uh, in the context of the uh, fire maneuver uh, versus the movement to contact. We need to do the movement to contact aspect and put that together. And then we'll start communicating both uh, verbally, which is verbally hand signals and getting that, that, that vibe off each other. When you, when you shoot or work enough, you can kind of like body language communicate, right? Uh, but then if you have distance, you want to be able to have good radio set up earpiece didn't work i could hear him but i could transmit his antenna broke so like i said the the radio aspect wasn't important in this today i just gonna see if it worked if it didn't uh, oh well you know we'll work on that because you can just sit around on a couch in the, yeah. in the warmth and play with your radios and see if they work before you you go out and do it on the cold um the bayo things work for what we're using them for just uh for squad movement and stuff um and for you know normal household shit. Whenever I'm at home, I'll leave one in the house while I'm outside. The wife, the wife needs me. I can just you know, run in instead of picking up the phone. But uh, um, they do break. I mean, they're cheap. Yeah. They're, I mean, you can get six of them for like a hundred bucks. Yeah. So, I mean, they're they're replaceable. It's, it's nothing nothing normal. Like this will still work without that antenna though. Yeah. 
for what we're doing. Yeah. Now, if we were breaking contact, you're going out 100, 200 yards, maybe not so much without the antenna, but it will still work. Um, but yeah. Yeah, you find out what your kit will survive, you know, uh, and then we did one day of training, like if you do like multiple, like mm -hmm. you'll break stuff, like, you know, the, 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 the weak links will always fall apart. Um, but then you just know I carry spares or I know this is going to break. I just have to manage it. So, um, one thing I said is, you know, when you talk about our rifles, we didn't spend a whole lot on them, yeah. but you know, I zero mine, you know, uh, twice a year from the change of the seasons. I verified with different ammo. I verified out 600. I shot it a bunch. I keep it lubed. Um, I don't clean it really, but I do lube it. I do check for parts. And I clean it maybe every six months or 500 rounds just to check for, for parts, abnormal parts wear. But you don't have to spend a lot of money on Gucci, Gucci shit. Um, it's more important to be be in shape and know your kit and know that your kit is going to work with what you're trying to do. And that part of that is testing it out. Yeah, for sure. Um, we probably, besides the optic, we probably have about the same amount in these, honestly. Um, I mean, the, I think the bigger issue now is just the, the whole community is buy the newest thing that's out, buy the newest thing that's out. And I think that uh, some of the trains have started to lack a lot in the yeah. last couple of years. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, there's definitely trends and it's keeping up with the Joneses and looking cool for the grand and whatever, but um, none of that translates to like skill. So yeah. again, uh, any of the gear without training is useless. It's just it's just kit for somebody like me to take off your ass because you sucked at <laughs> you know being able to fucking do anything about me shooting in the face. So um, cool, right? Well, I guess we'll. Uh, We'll see you in the next one, and then uh, I'll put together a couple of videos off of this and see how it goes. Yeah. So, all right. Cool. See you guys next Later. week. Later.